Hi everyone, welcome to the channel and to this video in particular. If you are new here, my name is Taryn and I'm an illustrator based in Western Australia. In today's video, I'm going to be working on my October bullet journal setup, the monthly theme, which is exploring the beautiful Scotland. This month, as part of the research, I decided to get out of the house and go to the library to do my research because I was getting immensely distracted when I was doing my usual research on the computer. Let's go. Especially in regards to Mary, the Queen of Scots, and just kind of war history and royal history um, to do with Scotland. So I felt like I kept getting distracted by all these articles, and it just kind of led me down a rabbit hole of paths on the internet. So I decided to do something different this month and actually get out of my house and go to the local library and see if I could research something that's in books and see how I go with that kind of research. I actually thoroughly enjoyed the process and the change of scenery while I was doing my research. It felt almost old school because I've done libraries for my children's books um, and fiction novels that I'm mainly trying to read, but I've never really took the time to actually search for something and explore the shelves. And so it was actually a really cool experience and yeah, took me back to my schooling years. Um, so yeah, once I found a few books to have a look through, I just grabbed a seat and brought out my laptop and just started to plan out my spreads. It was a really different experience using books to find the things that I would usually search for online. It really makes you appreciate how lucky we are to have these search engines at our fingertips 24 seven. Um, but it was really nice going back to the contents and trying to find what I was looking for, flicking to the page and lots of beautiful imagery of the gorgeous Scottish landscapes and housing and fairy tales, very magical place, Scotland, which I'll talk about more in the future of this video. <laughs> but yeah, I was having a lovely old time. And one thing though, I did find hard for me is having the sounds of um, other people distracting me quite a bit. So although it's super quiet, normally there was a mums and bubs session happening at the time, like a story time. And so there was some singing happening next to me at the time. So I, I finished up my study there after about an hour or two and then headed home. Here's a sweet example of the kind of songs they were singing. It was very darling to listen to actually. <laughs> So looking at the next day now, I was all refreshed. I'd have my plan um, plan of attack. I've kind of decided what I want to put on each page and then I can settle down throughout the day and just sketch and paint the best part. So for the cover page, I found a load of beautiful scenery and landscapes in Scotland. And one of the ones that really stood out to me because of its very magical properties was one place called Fairy Pools. So I was immediately attracted to it because of the name Fairy Pools. I thought it sounded really cool. And then the imagery was just breathtaking. So the waters are crystal bluey green, just completely clear. And there's these beautiful waterfalls that you can actually take a walking path to go through and visit them all. And then if you're brave enough, you can go swimming as well. But I think you'd have to be pretty brave to do that because the water is apparently freezing. Now the fairy pools are found on the Isle of Skye and I honestly didn't realise how many islands there are of Scotland. There are over 900 of them and the Isle of Skye is the second largest of them all and this one's like a mountainous island that just looks with beautiful little towns and just gorgeous nature. Be a beautiful place for photo opportunities I think. So this fairy pool's just stuck in my mind as I was flicking through the pages of those books um, and so I decided to make that the cover page but I thought because it had such a cool 
uh, magical name to it. I thought I would include my girl for my traveling girl um, as a fairy this time. So she's a teeny tiny fairy in the scene. And at first I wasn't sure how to include her in the scene, but um, when I started looking through more images of the incredible landscapes through Scotland, I kept seeing this flower, these fields of flowers, and they're bright purple, and they are very popular through the moors of Scotland. And I thought, I just have to get this on the cover page and make it a little bit more of a feature um, across the spread. So I thought it would be cute if the little fairy was sitting or hanging on one of the heather flowers in the foreground and looking out over the beautiful scenery or admiring her little fairy pool ahead of her. Um, the other thing I wanted to include on this page to further enhance that kind of magic vibe going on was have a unicorn drinking. And you might be thinking, why a unicorn? But the national animal of Scotland is actually a unicorn, which um, fascinated me. <laughs> and immediately I knew I had to draw one on the cover page. So yes, officially the most unusual national animal of a country that I have yet to come across in my studies. Um, but how cool is it for a national animal? The unicorn is a symbol of purity, innocence and power in Celtic mythology. They are proud, untamable creatures that are fiercely independent and famously difficult to capture or conquer, which I think is why the Scots have always felt drawn to what they represent. I learnt a little about the battle history of Scotland, um, adding to my knowledge from Braveheart, um, but I don't know that much. But what I understood is that unicorns are used to show that kings of Scotland are the only ones that have the power to tame the untamable unicorn. So they're always represented with golden chains around them and there's a lot of statues where they've always got the chains and they're even on the coat of arms as well since the 1500s. So this has been going on a long time, the Scottish um, relating themselves to the unicorns and having that as like a symbol of them. So I thought that was a very cool and unique animal to have and I thought it should feature here on the cover. Now in terms of a little bit about how I'm painting this, I I'm um, definitely on this path of being quite loose with my watercolours and my gouache in particular. So this one I am using my artist's gouache again and um, sometimes I'm using a little bit of water to make it a little bit more watercolory. <laughs> I guess the technical term would be transparent and then without using too much water they can go a little bit more opaque. So I'm just kind of using a mixture of the two techniques and using a broad tipped brush. Well, it's broad for me. It's just a flat brush instead of like a pointed or round brush that I would normally gravitate towards. I've been trying to use flat brushes to try and make my strokes a little bit more um, effortless and loose and relaxed and try not to worry too much about the details. So when I first started doing this, I was having so much fun. I love, love, love the process of working a little bit more freer, but I was, a little bit nervous that it wasn't going to turn out because of the lack of detail you know like I always get this kind of fear that it's going to look like a mess in the end um, or I won't be able to get it to a point where I'm happy with it um, but luckily I was able to I've got to just have a little bit more faith in my abilities um, which I am getting better at but yeah it, uh, artists I think are always a little bit too judgmental on their own process and stuff and I am no exception there um, but I did end up using pencil afterwards to try and enhance the detail a little bit more and just darken up some areas, add a little bit more contrast here and there. And I think the pencil is where I found it kind of coming to life. So my overall picture is of these beautiful waterfalls in the fairy pools. And she's just sitting there on a swing made from Heather, <laughs> watching the unicorn have a little drink. And I did also read something I'd never heard about with unicorns. I'd always known their horns had magical powers that could heal people, but I didn't realize that also the horn is supposed to cleanse toxic water and make it safe for us humans to drink from and bathe in. So I thought that was kind of cool to be putting the unicorn there and maybe that's how these fairy pools became so beautiful and clean and clear with the bright blue, like it's because it's been cleansed by the unicorn. As for the color palette that I chose, I definitely wanted to include purple as a central color for Scotland. 
Um, not that I think of Scotland as purple in my mind, but when I was looking at this heather flower all across the landscapes everywhere, it just kind of took over my mind and I just thought purple seems really magical and then related to the unicorn, it just made sense. So I kind of tried to keep this really pretty palette going throughout the setup. Um, so yeah, pinks and purples, light blues and a little bit of orange as well. And just sort of see how I can keep that pastel-ish palette going. And then no magical piece is complete without some magic from a gold pen. So I just used a little bit of fairy dust here and there to try and add to the magic. Then she was ready to scan in and I have digitized it and got it ready for my printable bullet journal theme that will be available very soon after the second part of this setup is revealed. Um, they are available on my shop and they're also up for grabs if you become a Patreon member. And so the two top tiers receive these every month. So if you're interested in learning more about that, there's links down in the description box to my Patreon and to my shop as well if you just wanted to buy the one off and yeah, and print it at home yourself, then you don't need to worry about creating any of the art stuff. It is all done for you. And then after that's all scanned in and ready to go, I can say bye-bye to the full piece and slice it down the middle ready to stick into my journal. This time I decided to round the corners as well, which is a nice touch because I actually went a little bit bigger on the size of the paper this time. And I think it really works quite nicely. So yeah, I love, love the colors on this cover spread. It makes me feel very happy to go and start planning in this October theme. And then the last thing I wanted to do for this cover page is actually give it a title because you may have noticed that there is none right now. Um, so it's usually kind of essential to have what month you're working in. Um, but I decided to go for just an initial. So I just wanted to do a nice O, the letter O, to start this month. And I do love a Dutch door beginning. So I did cut a corner off of the picture and just kind of made a little wave on the side. And then that reveals the calendar page beneath, which is where I can write my letter O. And I, I wanted to keep with that magical theme and I was really feeling sort of vintage fairy tale vibes from it. So I went for one of those nice ornate um, letters. I think they're called illuminated letters, if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, just like some ornate features and definitely do it in gold. And I also ran my gold pen down the edge of the page as well, just to add a little you know, like as if the book was a fairy tale book and you get those gold edged papers. And so after I finished off the cover page with that letter O, she was finished. And here is a look at the cover page for October. And now moving on to my calendar spread. I did notice that once I cut the wave down on the right hand side, when you flip over, it does eat into the calendar. So I had to um, shift the whole calendar up a little bit and alter my plan, um, but that was okay. It worked out all right in the end. And on this spread, I usually like to do the national animal here, but because it featured it featured on my cover so heavily, I didn't want to do another unicorn on this page. So instead, I sort of designed it in a way that would highlight a few of the things that I liked as I was researching and sort of coming across. And then also something that I just had to include in a Scottish setup and so far couldn't find a place for it elsewhere. And so the first thing that I wanted to put on here was a little square of tartan. Um, we all know about kilts and they are actually the national dress of Scotland and the tartan pattern can be done in so many different colours and it's always that same style where it's crisscrossed bands of horizontal and vertical lines but forming such a, a rich pattern that I just love and needed a way to get it into my setup. <laughs> 
I actually think I could do a whole setup with tartan, to be honest, because it's so much fun to do with um, water-based markers because when you do one line in vertical, then you go across it with horizontal, it automatically makes that um, darker colour where it crisscrosses. So it was just really fun to play with. And I think this would be an awesome thing to do as borders on your page if you wanted to do your own Scottish setup. I would definitely recommend just doing this crisscross pattern tartan all the way around your edges of your pages and it would look really really cool uh, but yeah so I wanted to keep those nice pastel shades color tones that I was using on the front cover and continue it here so I did use a Tombow brush marker in a lavender and then a pink and then a little aqua color and those three colors worked really nicely together and kind of kept it consistent as I turned back to the cover page um, so once I had done my little tartan patch down the bottom right hand corner, I decided to move up to the next grid section and work on something called the Kelpies. Now the Kelpies are the largest equine sculpture in the world. They are 30 meter massive horse heads that rise up out of the ground and they look so incredible. And these are based in Grangemouth, which I, when I was talking to my mum and my gran, I found out that that's where they lived when they lived in Scotland. So my mum um, was, I guess, raised for a few years in Scotland, maybe four or five years when she was really young. So she, when she moved to Australia, she had a really strong Scottish accent. Um, so yeah, I felt pretty excited to learn this about my family. I mean, I knew she lived in Scotland, but I didn't actually know whereabouts. And it turns out that it was in Grangemouth where these horses are. And, um, yeah, I definitely want to go, when I go to Scotland, I already want to go to Isle of Skye and definitely Grangemouth as well. Um, the stadium there, just another little interesting fact about my personal history is my granddad. So my mum's dad actually opened the stadium for, in Grangemouth, um, the athletic stadium. He was always in athletics and athletic training in the army, that kind of thing. And then apparently he opened or helped open for the ceremony of this Grangemouth Stadium. And apparently it was one of the first, it was the first fully synthetic um, tracks in the UK. Um, so, and that was back in 1966. So I just found that really interesting and I thought I'd share it with you. So also back to the horse heads, I wasn't sure why they were called the Kelpies. So I had a look into that and it turns out that Kelpie is a shape changing aquatic spirit of Scottish legend. So another mythical belief that was just so interesting to learn. These ones don't sound too friendly though, which is a shame. They're said to haunt rivers and streams and will often appear as a tame pony beside the water. Then once it has lured the unsuspecting person or child onto its back, it will be magically stuck on there and then be dragged into the water to be eaten. Scary stuff. And now moving on to the top illustration, which is, of course, a Highland cow. The cutest cows in the world. They have long fur across their eyes. And I always remember a little Highland cow at one of our local um, animal farms down in Perth. So I have an affinity with this particular cow because he was so friendly and his name was Sonny. And yeah, so as I was drawing this cow, all I remembered was, was, was that little Sonny guy. So yes, these cows are originally from the Scottish Highlands and they have that long shaggy fur to keep them warm in the conditions there. And so once I finished those illustrations on the side, I just add the actual title of the month to this page in a nice calligraphy font using my Tombow Fudunasuke pen and a gold pen to add a little, almost like a drop shadow or a drop line highlight around it. Um, and then this page was ready to go. So as you've probably noticed, I'm filming this month's setup a little bit differently to usual. I've moved into um, a new studio sort of area and I just kind of wanted to share more of it. So I thought I'd show you a bit more of 
behind the scenes, I guess, while I'm working on this, not just a top-down view, yet a little sneak peek into how I work and stuff. And as you can see, it's, you know, several days of work that goes into these setups. And yeah, let me know if you like this kind of um, varied filming style. I really enjoy watching these kinds of videos. Um, I find them a little bit more interesting, but then again, I do still like to watch the art unfold. So yeah, do share your thoughts on how you like this kind of video or whether you prefer to see everything sort of sped up, but don't miss a little thing. <laughs> Um, so now I'm moving on to my next page, which is my gratitude list. On this page, I love to write things that I'm grateful for throughout the month. And I always like to have a quote that sort of sparks my interest in that area. So the quote that I decided to go for this time is from Braveheart, which is an all time brilliant movie and it's a true story about Sir William Wallace who was a Scottish knight who became one of the main leaders during the first war of Scottish independence so a very important historical figure for Scotland and one of the quotes there's so many good quotes in that movie um, but one of his quotes is your heart is free learn to follow it and I think that's a really nice way of saying listen to your heart and uh, and go with it because it's honest and it's the truth sort of thing. That's that's how I take it. I mean, there was another quote that I really liked the sound of, but I didn't end up writing it down just because it was too funny. It's Billy Connolly, the hilarious comedian from Scotland. And he says, there's no such thing as bad weather, only the wrong clothes, <laughs> which just held a lot of truth to me. Once again, I'm the worst packer for traveling ever. Like every trip I've ever been on, I've had to buy the right shoes or the right outfits. Like if I go somewhere in Europe in summertime, I assume it's not going to be as hot as our summer. So I wear jeans and like jumpers and stuff. <laughs> and I always have to buy clothes over there. Really, I think it might be a, a secret to just wanting to buy new clothes in other places, but it's really not. It's actually the fact that I am just like, I just don't think about the conditions and then I end up packing the wrong stuff. So that idea just just came to me and as soon as I'm in the traveling mode when I'm researching, I just thought that was hilarious. But anyway, um, before I move on to my next page, I will just mention here, I didn't draw them, but I just wanted to mention that Alexander Graham Bell is Scottish and he invented the telephone. So like so many inventions were from Scotland that I had no idea. So we had the telephone from Alexander Graham Bell. Sir Alexander Fleming was the inventor of penicillin. So that we owe a lot of thanks to. And then there's the refrigerator, the MRI scanner inventions, the toaster, ATMs, the first colour photograph and the flushing toilet, <laughs> just to name a few. So now that I have written that in a nice calligraphy on the left-hand side, it's time to move on to my meal planner. Now, spoiler alert, this is probably my favourite meal planner page that I've done in a long, long time. Um, now, I didn't go for the National Food of Scotland because I found that was haggis and haggis. Sorry, Scotland, but haggis to me sounds yucky and it looks really gross, so I just didn't want to draw it. <laughs> um, but what I did love the look of is the gorgeous Scottish pubs around that serve the national drink, which is Scotch whiskey. So I thought I'd draw an illustration that reflected one of those cute little pubs. But also this one is kind of a half, a half blend of a pub and a cafe. The cafe I have decided to draw is called the Elephant House. And the reason I drew that one is because apparently um, this is where J.K. Rowling started writing Harry Potter. But actually, no, investigating further, she didn't start writing it here, but she definitely admits to writing a lot of the Harry Potter first book here. The cafe itself has definitely taken this as a claim to fame, so they've sort of themed um, lots of Harry Potter things at the cafe itself and used it to advertise on the outside. They say the birthplace of Harry Potter. And so it may not be technically true. I still think it's really cool that she was there writing um, the stories in the cafe. And actually a lot of Edinburgh has a lot of Harry Potter tours that you can do, including a walking tour, which sounds lots of fun, where you visit um, places where JK Rowling was inspired by and sort of streets that are like the real life Diagon Alley, like in 
Edinburgh and Victoria Street. So places that just look really um, magical and part of that series. And then the one thing that I really want to do is the steam train. It's called the Jacobite steam train. And it is quite literally the Harry Potter Express. And it is a part of the filming location of the bridges that it crosses in the Harry Potter movies. And it just looks incredible. It sounds incredible to go on this steam train and see all the beautiful scenery. And you end up at Loch Ness, which would be very cool, where we could um, perhaps spot the Loch Ness monster. So, yeah, taking into account all those Harry Potter things that are pretty famed for in Edinburgh, I decided to include them in my shop front that I drew for the menu page. So I'm kind of imagining you're looking at the shop front of the cafe, um, but it's actually more like a whiskey bar kind of thing. And to tie in that witchcraft thing, I thought I would put a cauldron in the front window, but it's actually brewing iron brew. Now, iron brew is the Scottish, the other Scottish national drink. If you're not familiar with what it is, it's a like a soft drink. It's been around since 1901. I remember trying it once and I remember thinking it was super, super sweet, but the Scottish people absolutely love it. And it's really popular over there, even beating out the sales for Coca-Cola. Um, but it's also usually found in other countries where there's a heavy Scottish community as well. So it's definitely like a, a it's quite a symbol of um, the Scottish culture, I think, from what I've learnt. Um, so I thought it would be cute to brew some iron brew in an iron cauldron. See, you, do you get where I'm going there? So I thought I was pretty clever thinking of that. Um, so I just drew the logo of iron brew on the front of the cauldron. So that's my little... That's my little nod to Iron Brew on this page. And then I just used a lot of elements from Harry Potter, like the lightning bolt and the platform nine three quarters, and just kind of tried to tie in pieces of magic throughout the page. And I really am happy with how it looks. I think it'll be fun to fill this one out um, in the windows. So the days of the week are all spread throughout the windows of the shop front. And yeah, I just really wanted to keep it simple because I didn't think it needed the color. So I just did this whole spread in black and gold. And this was very refreshing to actually enjoy the process of this one and enjoy the outcome. And now moving on to the final page of this part of the setup. I will be continuing this setup next week. Um, so if you want to come back and see what else I create from Scotland in my setup, just click the subscribe button to come back and see that next week. Um, so on this page, this is my goodliness spread, which is basically habit trackers if you haven't been to the channel before. Um, so this one, I like to accompany my trackers with a nice illustration. Um, the reason I put so much effort into my setups is because it's my form of practice. I love practicing art and sometimes it you know it passes your time passes you by and you haven't done your practice so by setting these up every month it really keeps me keeps my skills alive and I try new things and it's something that I can appreciate and look at it's like functional it's a way to make your art functional so so because as I said this is my practice this is where I kind of it's like a sketchbook slash planner and I really really felt like watching um, Brave one of the days because I was you know immersed in the Scottish culture um, so I did I watched it with the kids and I love that movie I think it's such a good one and I love the character Merida so I thought she deserves pride of place in my setup this month so yeah for on this goodliness page I decided to draw Merida from Brave and her hair is just amazing and it's so cool to draw and I really wanted to show the vibrant colour in it and just have a bit of fun. And I did. I had a lot of fun drawing this. So if you haven't seen Brave before, first of all, you must watch it. It is great. Um, it's basically a fun Disney movie that is set in the Scottish Highlands and it's about Princess Merida basically not wanting to be betrothed and so she rebels and fights for her own independence I guess and she's just like a courageous awesome character um, who's a master at archery the best in the kingdom and yeah just it's just really cool and it's got a little bit of magic through it as well which I love um, but yeah 
I also love, love, love the Scottish accent. So it's full of beautiful Scottish voices to listen to and including actually Billy, Billy Connolly is one of them. So yeah, I can't recommend it higher and I adore the animation. And so I just felt like drawing Merida and it was just so enjoyable. <laughs> um, I just used my Pigma Micron to sketch out the outline and then I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, whether I was going to paint it or colored pencil it. Um, in the end, I decided to just go for a little bit of colored pencil for the skin areas and then just have the ha hair color pop. So I decided to keep everything else white and I'm glad I did because it doesn't make it too full on then. Um, we all know that I like to go a little bit full on in most of my setup, but especially my mind map page. So I kind of wanted to save some of my energy for the next page as well. Um, so I just kept this one quite minimal and just this wild mass of hair, which I love. And yes, yeah, so I really enjoy the movie itself. And I like that you get to see a little bit of the customs of royal Scottish clans and things. I don't know how accurate it is, but I'm sure there's definitely some truth to how things were run. So it's just interesting to learn about such a different kind of life. Um, and then to finish off this page, I needed a title. So I thought I'd try and keep with the Brave idea, like the cover of the Brave um, film. It has got this awesome Celtic kind of lettering. And I thought I'd try and do that in the word goodliness and have it coming at the top. Um, and so just instead of doing a proper Celtic pattern inside the letters, I just cheated and did some crisscrosses. <laughs> but um, yeah, it worked out nicely. And I really like how this page turned out in the end. And I'm just using a cutout cheats mini calendars as I like to do on these spreads because I don't like to have to write everything there. Um, and then I can just through the month check off all of my good habits. And then finally, just finishing off with the titles of each of the habits that I'm going to track. And I'm just doing that in a simple calligraphy style with that same Tombow food and a suitcase pen. And then this page is finished and it's ready for my mind map as I turn over, which once again, please come back for next week to see the rest of the setup. And in next week's video, I will also be making the um, choices for the month of December, actually, because right now I can reveal to you the winning country for the month of November. And that is Denmark. We are going to explore this beautiful country next month and see what I can learn and get inspired by for my journal setup. So if you want to come back and check that out, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my future videos. A big, big thank you to my current patrons who I will list on screen now. And I just really appreciate all your support. And thank you so much for watching. And don't forget that if you do want to see more of my content, I am on Instagram and I also have a Patreon page, which you can check out and sign up to be a member for as little as $2 a month. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.